turns out, what we've already been learning, is that every field's different and every field responds differently. So really, the advantage that we have here in this new technology is being able to do an experiment in just about every field that we work in. With current and new technologies, we can do a much better job of determining what's best to do on any given field with experiments that we can automatically put in a field. So our whole idea, we're in a wheat field, a winter wheat field here, and we're looking at different rates of nitrogen input, nitrogen fertilizer, and which ones will maximize the net return, because there's a cost, of course, to the, to the nitrogen. But the real advantage in these on-farm trials is that we can continue to do those in a field like this, and pretty soon we get a database, a background of data, that allows us to really understand what the response is. And again, these are very field-specific. Kind of when we started off this experiment six years ago, you know, we kind of felt like our target yield was 50 bushels to the acre. We fertilized for 50 bushels to the acre, and you know what, we felt like every year, we were pretty well hitting it smack on the money because we averaged right around 50 bushels. And so when you guys came along, we started experimenting with some variable rate fertilizer, changing your rate up or down just to see what kind of results we could get. And we try to automate that process using variable rate technology, all the information that's available to us, either through combine-mounted yield monitors, combine-mounted protein measurement device, and all the information we can gather from satellites, drones, whatever kinds of information might be available. I remember watching a yield monitor when I first put it in the combine. I, I just was transfixed by the change in the numbers. A crop that looks uniform, like this one, that has behind me that has over 200 different trials in it uh, looks pretty uniform. It's really hard for us humans to tell the difference, but the transducers that we have been able to put on machines tell us what the yield is and what now what the protein is at those locations. A fairly broad-based approach where we're looking at a wide variety of machine learning methods to, to do things like the yield prediction or with the type of equipment that they have here in terms of coming up with this, the prescriptions where we have to you know, control for some of the realities of that equipment, not wanting huge jumps as the, the application levels change and actually factoring that into some of the optimization methods that we're devising. So we like to say we're make, trying to make farmers better gamblers when it comes to guessing what the weather conditions are going to be and what their best approach might be or what their best nitrogen rates might be. We also are interested in, in finding out not just what the, the maximum net return is, but actually also balancing that with this risk of, of nitrogen loss, which can become a pollutant. So we're measuring um, potential for nitrogen loss by a mass balance approach. So what we do is we take a measurement of the soil nitrogen before uh, the farmer applies fertilizer. Um, during the growing season, uh, we measure the plant. And then after harvest, we come back and take soil samples again. And so from subtraction, we can figure out how much nitrogen went into the crop um, and how much nitrogen you applied did not go into the crop. Um, which is not providing value to the farmer. So that when we can kind of do a balancing act and say that, well, you know, it may, we may result in saying, let's apply a lower rate, even though you won't get as high a profit, you might reduce your chance of pollution. In that case, then, you could see that the policy could follow and allow for payment to a farmer that's willing to take that lower rate, less pollution, but makes up for their loss. What we started into this whole project is realizing that there's plenty of companies producing software out there. But as we looked at those in detail, we realized right away that most of them were organizing data and allowing farmers to sort of see their yield maps. 
but they're really not trying to instruct decisions as directly as we do. What we feel like we've really learned is that the potential of what we had for yield it was is dictated a lot by what kind of fertility we put with it and we were under fertilizing. Even the extra fertilizer, we don't lose it in a drought year, it stays in the soil, but it also improves our yield potential because of the fact that you're starting a plant that is more healthy, more robust, and it actually um, stores more moisture in the, in the plant foliage. So it's been a very good benefit for us. We've, we've learned something that we would not have outside of the experiment. It's a decision aid, it's not a decision maker. We always recognize the value of traditional knowledge and of historic knowledge that a farmer has is, is unequaled. So we want to mix data with that. In the, the development of this project, from our standpoint, we felt much better about what we were learning and what you were learning once we did more of it in-house. And uh, we learned how to apply it, we learned how to map it, we learned how to put background maps up, big difference inaccuracy. So I think precision agriculture is definitely the wave of the future, but how we use it is interesting to see because there's a transition for farmers to, they're not going to suddenly jump into data managing their system. <laughs> we need to find ways that honors that traditional and that experiential knowledge at the same time that, it, that we produce data to inform that knowledge. We started uh, precision ag stuff in, I'd say, 95 or 96. You can now have yield maps or protein maps as a background so that you can, you, the human, can use your eyes to see what's going on in the field. And I really like being in the field because of that. I like to learn what is going on, see what's going on. The experiment we started out was to find the, the best economic rate of return of N across our land. So regardless of taking variable rate across the fields out, you know, because there, there is value in that, but just the value for us of finding, okay, where should our base rate be? That was the big issue for us. Not even beyond finding how much fertilizer should go on that hill versus down here. It's like, okay, where's the economic return? And that's the biggest single takeaway that we have found. There's a recognition that we're stewards of land. We have to take care of it. And so when we start making these decisions about how much nitrogen are we applying, that's part of the equation. What is the environmental impact going to be as well as what is the net return going to be? And, and it's quite gratifying to, to, to see that that is an important part of this process as well. If you can show economic return of the product that you're trying to sell, farmers are on it. And that's what we've seen for us. It has made us money working with you.